Okay, welcome back, guys. Uh, let's pick up from where we stopped. Uh, so, chapter eight. Uh, this chapter is uh, talking about the restoration of the ministry of the teacher. Now, it's got a lot of uh, people from the uh, new, ch uh, the early church, the New Testament church, and what happened after uh, the Apostle Paul. What happened to the ministry and how the uh, the ministry of the teacher continued on uh, past Apostle Paul and uh, after the disciples and all of that. So uh, there are a lot of people that who may you may it may sound new to you, but uh, so what I thought was I'll just uh, you know present the notes so that we can you know just be on the same page and uh, right. So chapter eight the restoration of the ministry of the teacher. So I've just highlighted uh, things that are important. Uh, and so let's go through this chapter, right? Okay, so just to put a little bit of a background, Apostle Paul has moved on. Timothy has taken over the church. So the next line of leadership, Timothy, Titus, they were all there. And slowly they have moved on as well. So we don't have an account of what happened after that. What happened to the churches? You know, there were plenty of churches in Asia Minor, the church in Jerusalem, and uh, so what happened to those churches? Did they just dissolve and just go away, or uh, was there too much of persecution that everything stopped? Uh, so we'll see that God raised up men and women of God who continued the ministry of teaching and preaching the word of God, right? So the canon is our standard or the rule of faith uh and christian teachers uh you know all through from the uh, new testament whose documents were have been survived for us who wrote directly after the new testament period are known as apostolic fathers so after the new testament period there were god raised up christian leaders and teachers to continue writing and teaching the word of God. And they published something called as the Apostles' Creed in AD 150. And uh, uh, I, I'm sure most of us may know it. Uh, uh, it says, uh, I just know portions of it. Uh, I believe in God the Father. I believe, uh, you, know, uh, you know, that whole creed there. I believe he was resurrected. He died. He rose again. Uh, he seated in heaven. And one day he will soon come again, uh, you know. But later on, this Apostles' Creed was tweeted and added, a lot of things were added to that creed uh, by the Roman Catholic Church. So it was around, uh, after this, uh, the early church came the Dark Ages where the Roman Catholic, uh, and we did this in uh, revivals, visitations, and moves of God as well. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church came into being, and we saw that there was no kind of teaching. There was no work of the Holy Spirit. Nothing was going on. It was just a form of religion, right? Uh, but this was written before that, right? Right. Now, let's look at a few people that God raised up to continue this ministry of teaching. Uh, Didache. Right, uh, that's how his name is pronounced. But some of them say Didak uh, was an early church teacher, and he taught about leadership, about baptism, about prayer, the Lord's Supper, and Christian morality. Right, uh, and then Clement of Rome. I'm sure we all have heard of this Clement of Rome, uh, the Epistle to the Corinthians. Right now, uh, Clement of Rome, what he did was he. He, if you read about his life, he goes on to Corinth, and uh, you know after the whole time when Aquila Priscilla was there, and then new leader, then a few more leaders were raised up. And Clement of Rome, he felt that he should go into Corinth, and he again taught a lot about immorality and how holiness is important, right? So just like how Apostle Paul wrote epistles to the church in Corinth, Clement of Rome also wrote uh, epistles to the church in Corinth, right? Now, we don't know if it's exactly the same church. Uh, most probably, there may have been plenty of new churches as well that have started around Corinth, but he did write to the Corinthians, right? Uh, he addressed uh, the Corinth 
using his using clement's name but uh not uh you know uh, not from him is what's mentioned here uh christian sermons he wrote to them he wrote to them mostly about integrity and holiness uh, clement of rome uh, again he also was uh, I don't know how, but he was martyred for Christ, right? Clement of Rome. Then there was Ignatius. Uh, there are seven letters that he has written, and all these letters talk about teaching and ministering of the word. He, uh, you know, Ignatius spent a lot of time on uh, teaching the attributes of God. Right uh, now, we must understand that new believers were added into the church. Many of them were just you know the holy spirit came into them they were changed they became new believers but they didn't know about god about his attributes about his nature and so ignatius was the one who you know wrote about the attributes and he wrote seven letters to different uh, churches and what does it show the ministry of teaching continued on right it's not like apostle paul wrote letters and then everything was stopped no ministry continued it's just that the holy spirit chose these letters of the apostle paul to be in the new testament right and then papius uh, and Irenaeus, eusebius these are all you know uh, writers and teachers and these are wonderful men of god because you know just like it is said that Irenaeus uh, was a wonderful apologist right he he was a very very learned teacher a uh, wonderful apologist he would stand and just like how apostle paul would you know stand how he stood at mars hill and in aeropagus uh, in the book of acts when he went into athens he stood there and he gave a defense for the gospel Irenaeus was a man who was a great apologist he had a very high learning uh, uh, again uh, if I'm not wrong, Irenaeus also was martyred for Christ, right? And Eusebius. Then came Barnabas, uh, uh, and he attacks Judaism, and he was heavy on the Old Testament prophecies. Epistle of uh, Diognetus uh, argues about paganism and Judaism. Now, what is paganism? Uh, now, we must understand that there were Gentiles who believed and worshipped other idols and other gods and there were Jews who still followed the law right so they were still doing sacrifices uh, as for the old test old covenant and the requirements to the old covenant but uh, what epistle of uh, uh, Diognetus says is he says anything that is taken priority to the Lord Jesus Christ becomes a pagan thing Right. So he talks about paganism, Judaism, uh, and he talks about uh, forgiveness of sins, redemption. So now it's not like he's, you know, these people are not just preaching a sermon. They have written about it. They've extended commentaries written about it. So, for example, they, they would write a Bible verse and they would explain it in the writing. Right. Uh, and, and and this history proves that they have all of these material right they they probably verses on water baptism or uh, you know we know that apostle paul's writings were very high and so people like Irenaeus were you know they would write it and then interpret it and try to teach the people through their writing right and so we see the ministry of teaching continuing on then Polycarp of Smyrna, now he wrote the epistle to the Philippians. Um, it is said that during this time, the Philippians were going through a lot of uh, persecution. Right? Uh, Philippi, uh, being Asia Minor, was uh, you know, uh, part of uh, the Roman colony. Uh, they were going through a lot of persecution. Right? And, po and Polycarp, he writes to them. Now, I'm not talking about one letter, okay, like how Apostle Paul wrote, right? Be strong even through, no. He's writing to them about the word, the teaching of the word, right? Uh, and if you go online, you go to Google, there's a lot of material that you can, you know, uh, see about them. You know, Polycarp wrote a lot about, uh, uh, you know, redemption of sins and, uh, you know, the, the afterlife. What do we, how, how uh, as believers, what happens to us? 
right? We are no, we are not of the flesh, but we are of the spirit. So there's a lot of emphasis on that, right? Uh, and Polycarp again was uh, martyred for Christ, right? And then many, many, many other writings, right? Recognized apostles and their writings became the rule of faith for Christians in the New Testament. So we see that, you know, this whole aspect of the ministry of teaching did not stop and it will not stop till the end of times. Teaching is a ministry that will continue, right? God will raise up leaders, right? And, and, and the wonderful part is these were people who were highly intellectual. So this is a very important thing that we must learn that it's not that we choose ministry because, okay, I just want to be a teacher. No, the, the, there is a lot of effort involved in being in the ministry. We need to be able to teach people. And if we have to teach people, we must be ready to go through that season of learning. We need to spend time in God. Right? We need to hear from God. And next class, we'll talk about uh, you know some of the ways that uh, practical tips on doing the ministry of a teacher. Uh, so we see here, God used even Tertullian and Origen. Uh, here, these two here market, but Tertullian and Origen were great, great writers, wonderful writers. They said that um, uh, uh, Tertullian and Origen had such a high understanding that they were compared to Apostle Paul in his in, in their oratory and writing skills. Very brilliant in their uh, material, right? And Irenaeus. Again, uh, grew up in Smyrna. He was an Asia Minor disciple of Polycarp. He 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 becomes later on uh, the pupil of Apostle John, uh, and, and he was a, a, a pupil of Apostle John. And he, what did he write here? He writes two important works: demonstration of the apostolic faith against heresies, and uh, and he wrote, uh, you know, God is a loving Creator against Gnosticism. Now, we know that Greece was, Asia Minor was full of Gnostic beliefs. What is Gnostic? Uh, Gnostic is simply, uh, you know, some some random belief systems, believing in the stars, believing in the moon, believing in nature, in uh, all kinds of things, right? Gnostic uh, uh, belief system. So he wrote against it, right? Uh, he thought about pastoring, shepherding the flock, um, incarnation, angels, the devil, the word, the Holy Spirit, huma humanity, incarnation, redemption, church growth, spiritual growth. And Irenaeus, again, did a wonderful work of writing all these. Now, why are we learning this? Why, why, why must I know about all these people? I know that I have to teach, so I will prepare and teach. Now, the reason we're learning about this is because we, we want to see that God can use people and will use people to continue what he has started, right? Now, even now, when we look around us, right, there are so many probably Bible colleges and uh, universities, Christian universities and, um, you know, uh, ministries that have their own Bible colleges. It's wonderful, right? But here's the thing. We must make sure that the doctrine is right. right? Make sure that the word of God is the foundation. And so if we go on, I'm, I'm trying not to spend too much time on this. Uh, it's just for us to know that you know God is working. right? Even through the dark ages, he was working. You know, Clement of Alexandria, born in Athens, uh, was a philosopher, was supreme in Alexandria, in Egypt. He was an intellectual man, uh, was a thinker, he was a scholar. He used Greek philosophy to make the point of Christ. Now, who did that? Who brought out these kind of things? You know, Greek philosophical understanding, pagan intellectuals to talk to them, the great apostle Paul. So we see this. You know, it, it's like a cycle. One leader, then another teacher, teachers, teachers, and it's it's just continuing on. 
we see a ripple effect right and that's why we saw right a very important in chapter 7 raise up other leaders who can do the same thing or better than what we have done right? and clement of alexandria very intellectual was able to use greek philosophy to bring out the scriptures and with this it is historical proof that many people came to christ through these teachings and preaching now it's important to understand that yes the holy spirit was working but god is not a god who we can put uh, you know we can put him in a box and say only if people are healed they will become believers or only if people uh, you know hear a prophetic word word of knowledge about their lives they become a believer no a proper effective teaching of the word of god from god's word can touch people's lives and change. Right. Now look at look at us, right? We every time we go to the scripture, we read it. There's something inside us, right? Uh, the Holy Spirit ministers to us, right? So so we must come out of that mindset. Of, okay, I have to see dreams, visions, or I have to see healing miracles. Only then, you no, know, uh, I I'm growing in the Lord. No, it is the Word. Right, and so we see here all these leaders. Did they not emphasize on healings and miracles? We don't know, but what was their main intention? We need to see people growing in the word of God and protecting them against heresies, against Gnosticism, against the works of the devil. So we have to teach them how to live a holy life how to overcome the things of the enemy and so they write so teaching is very 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 powerful you know when we teach people and you're teaching from the word of god that word can really grip their hearts it can change alter the course of their life so that is why when you and i get opportunities we never take it lightly prepare well plan well practice well right uh, when when you get an opportunity to teach uh, maybe in places and you know it one week ahead prepare well prepare points prepare things uh, you know we saw how jesus set the example right he had uh, taken put in parables stories uh, you know when you put your heart and your soul into something that you want to do it will minister to people's lives Right? Uh, so if you know that you're going to teach and preach somewhere, prepare well. Be well prepared. Now it's not like these people, you know, uh, uh, Irenaeus and uh, Clement of Alexandria were like, okay, I have nothing to do, so let me just go and uh, you know stand and talk about Jesus. No, they were learned scholars, right? So how much more we must also, you know, pursue that. Now, all of us may not be, be scholars or become scholars, but we all can teach the word. Same word, right? Uh, we can teach the word. Uh, look at this, Tertullian in, from Carthage, North Africa, converted in Rome when he was 40 years old, wrote in defense of Christianity uh, in the rhetoric of a lawyer. So he wrote a case. You know, like a lawyer, no? Tertullian was a lawyer. He wrote a case. Okay, this is, you know, if you've seen these lawyers, how they write cases, it's it's really interesting. They'll put the whole, uh, the case study, they put what is the wrong, what is the event, what is the place, what, what, what was wrong, what should have been done, and what can be done. And so it's like a thesis. So Tertullian does that. He writes a complete defense for Christianity. For example, right? He's writing uh, now in Africa. We know that uh, during those times it was more of Gnostic Gnostic beliefs, and uh, uh, there was there was belief on you know uh, uh, the stars. They they believed in uh, the moon as a god, and so all of those things. So picture this Tertullian sitting there, and he's writing a thesis. And he's writing and saying, you people believe in all of these diseases. 
okay this is what jesus is this is what god is this is what jesus did for us and so through this we can find salvation and when we are saved these are the things that happen so he's writing it as a thesis right like a case so now it's up to you what do you want to do do you want to choose this or do you want to choose this right and so there was again the ministry of teaching and uh, he wrote against the heretics of the Roman Catholic Church right now this is the 16th almost the 16th century uh, the Roman Catholic Church was taken has taken uh, you know prominence they, they said no only one Bible it should be in the church everyone come and listen to them right and the Pope is higher authority than the Bible is also so there was a lot of heresies in the church and Tertullian again writes against all of this he defends and he says this is not right right uh, we all have faith we all need to be willing to you know the Holy Spirit is for all of us and all of us must be willing to uh, you know uh, read the word and grow in the word of God and one of the main uh, topics that he also wrote about was Trinity because Trinity was something was a debatable question during the, those times not only for the Catholics but also for those who are uh, out of the faith right for, uh, from Gentile believers uh, uh, he wrote what is what is the Trinity how it came into being how the Trinity is portrayed in the word in the Gospels um, one nature in three persons uh, right and and we see that this ministry continued and then finally origin a disciple of clement of alexandria right uh, north africa born north Af north africa of christian parents his father was killed during a period of persecution when he was a teenager he wanted to offer himself as a martyr but his mom stopped him he trained under the bishop of alexandria started a school of christian philosophy right uh, and he was also a voracious writer he wrote a lot large amount of literature large amount of commentaries right so if you go to Google right now right uh, even the time that we are in right now uh, I'm gonna stop presenting if you go to Google there are plenty of commentaries that we see around us right just go to Google you have so much information Right. Some of the, you know, David Guzik's uh, uh, commentaries and all these commentaries. So much of information available. But remember, that time there was nothing. There's no Google, no internet, nothing. And so they, the believers would use their commentaries, their learnings and their writings. Most probably what would have happened was churches would get copies of these writings and they would study it and the leaders of the church would study it and they would teach it in the church so we see that in this way the ministry of teaching was restored right now did it completely die away no but god restored it to fullness and then if you see after this as well slowly the ministry of the teaching comes lesser but then in the early uh, you know 16 1960s 50s and 60s the teaching ministry again begins to rise with a lot of wonderful men and women of god starting universities bible colleges uh, uh, and then the 70s the 80s the whole uh, you know there was at one place there was a lot of the prophetic and healing that was happening uh, but on the other side there was also the teaching of the word of god uh, wonderful universities were you know were established and raised up uh, with one sole purpose to teach people the word of God right so it's wonderful to see that uh, you know when the Holy Spirit gives us this gift it's not going to be withdrawn just like that because God has given to us so I just want to encourage all of us right um, you may if you're getting opportunities to teach do it with all your heart prepare well right? if you haven't got opportunities yet and you're waiting for your opportunities it's all right 
become a, a, a student of the word of god right just keep reading keep learning and i always tell uh, you know people uh, especially the uh, those who are you know younger and uh, i tell them you know when when we were growing up we didn't have access to google and all of that right it was not easy of course google was there but we would have to go to an internet parlor which was very you know who's going to do all of that right uh, uh, but now it's all at at our fingertips right it's all at our fingertips you just or even if you go onto the phone you have so much available online and thank god praise god for all that is available online right uh, some of the materials that i use is eSword. Uh, just go there they have plenty of uh, commentaries there uh, in eSword. um you know, it's a paid subscription but then uh, just put that in eSword. Uh, it's a paid subscription then we also have uh uh commentary uh, then there is uh yeah just putting a few that i remember uh and there's there's lots there's lots online there's um there's a nice uh I, I don't know if the app is there but it is a paid uh, uh service again where you can you know see a lot of material preach at dot com um uh, so these are all wonderful places where we can just learn so much right uh so i want to encourage each one of us uh, don't be satisfied okay three hours of bible college oh finally i'm done today now uh, don't 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 have that attitude right so we just continue to learn ask questions continue to you know ask questions to yourself um, you know go through sermons read sermons listen to sermons you know one of the things i do is even at uh, when i go to um, let me just put that thing here uh, this is again another wonderful place where we get a lot of good material uh, so you can download their PDFs, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, there are sermons, but there are also teachings on topics, right? Topical sermons and uh, uh, word studies, uh, character studies. Uh, now, all these things, these studies, as you study it, it will help you, right? Uh, now, let me give you this example, right? I was reading the book of Acts after becoming a believer and all of that. Uh, reading the book of acts and nothing was going into my head so what is this you know suddenly there's somewhere suddenly there's somewhere everything is like it's like a story but where where is what like you know, nothing was aligning now as a student of the word of god i had to do something right? i'm just giving this example right you can think of other things that come to your mind uh, I said, okay, I want to learn Apostle Paul's missionary journeys. How am I going to do that? Now, I didn't have, uh, you know, I didn't go to Google and I could not do that. But what I did was, right, this is just an example, right? Uh, not saying you have to do the same thing. You can just do it on Excel and Word document and all that. So I bought a chart, right, a big chart, and I divided it. I said, Paul's missionary journeys. One, two, three, four. And so I began to read the book of Acts. I said, okay, first missionary journey. He went into Galatia. What are the churches in Galatia? So I wrote down, okay, this one, two, three, four, five churches. Okay. So what he does after that, he comes back to Jerusalem. Okay. And then in each column also, uh, when did he go? With whom did he go? And what was the result of that missionary journey? Right, so each column has its own first missionary journey, second, third, finally the uh, visit to Rome. And but after doing that, things became clearer, right? And I, and there came a point where I just knew. First, he went here with these people; these are the Jews. Second, he went here; these are the places; these are the churches. 
So what happens when we put these extra efforts as a teacher, right? Uh, when you begin to teach people, you know, okay, this, this is it. This is how I thank, you know, even now I'm just picturing that chart and I still have it with me. Uh, and it's really helpful because now who told me to do it? Nobody. Right. It was something that I thought to myself, what if I get an opportunity to teach right, in the future? Right? What if I get an opportunity to teach? So I should know this. And then even the Levitical offerings, go back to the Levitical. Okay. All the offerings I put there, why those offerings are for the sin offering, the guilt offering, the peace offering, uh, the grain offering, all those offerings for it. And, just study about it. what if I get an opportunity to teach, right? So I must be ready, right? Uh, and I can always go back and refer to it. And uh, so we must have that desire as students of the Word of God. Only when we are a student, we'll be able to teach it to others, right? Uh, and so next class, we'll talk about the practical keys of doing the uh, doing the ministry of a teacher. But I, I want to ask you, uh, maybe some of you here are already teachers. Um, what are some of the challenges you face as a teacher? Maybe some of you can share. W what do you think are you know some of the challenges uh, that you have faced and how do you feel that you can you know improve? Just for us to, I can share with mine, OK? Uh, I'll start with mine. Uh, one of the challenges I faced was, <clears throat> As a teacher, I had to always, you know, uh, I could not just stay around what what the what I'm talking like the topic, right? So if I'm talking about uh, uh, worship, right? If I'm teaching about worship, so I can't just say, okay, worship is this and that. So it's always good to like one of the challenges I faced was I had to go to different materials from different sources and you know going into the greek and the hebrew and all of it uh, it was a challenge initially right? initially i thought oh man this is like how am i going to rem remember the words and uh, you know so it, it was quite a challenge and and so i had to overcome it by understanding that unless i know the background of something i would not be able to effectively deliver it uh, so what what are some of the challenges that you may have faced or you are facing right now uh, in terms of the teaching ministry? Any of you would like to share? I know that John is a is pastoring our church at uh, APC Mangalore. John, you want to share something? Uh, any any anything that you went through or you feel that? You know, especially, I, I also know that you take the Wednesday Bible studies, so you're teaching there. So, you want to share your thoughts? I'll come back. Okay. This... okay. <laughs> no worries. Still thinking, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Anybody else? Anybody else? Maybe your. Yes, Lubega, go ahead. Yes, Pastor and the class. I've been a teacher since uh, 2000. Mm. And, um... Wow. But um, number one, if you want to make it as a teacher, number one, know your audience. Mm. Know your audience is very important. Uh, when you know what level, what are the expect, what your audience are, number one is to know your audience. Number two, just as you said, you must know your content. Yeah. Know your content very well because you might be talking in front of people who actually know more than you know. Yeah. Because, because you're standing on the pulpit does not really mean that you're the fountain of knowledge. Yeah. Some True. people forget that <laughs> some people when they are uh, they are conducting lessons or when they are in church, they think that they know almost everything. Yet, <laughs> this is just a privilege God has given you. You are the one standing today, but it doesn't really mean that you know more than everybody there. Yes. So you must you must talk what you 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 know you must make research. Yeah. In a nutshell, I can say that being a teacher can be concluded in one word: you must prepare. 
There is nothing that replaces preparation. Preparation, yes. So can Lu I put my yes, Lubega. I, I I wanted to ask you this. Uh, are you, are you, can you hear me? I'm hearing you, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. So in 20 years, I, I'm sure over the years you have grown as a teacher. You have learned from your mistakes. Uh, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Like, what, uh, you know, uh, you felt that, hey, I, I can do better in this. Or uh, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Uh, and when you're not know, communication, just like any other form of communication, teaching, uh, you need the, you know, part of, uh, I think 33% of communication is word and 67% are known towards our gestures, how you move your, how you dressed, how you move your body language, how there are so many things. But uh, number yeah. one, the problem I faced as a teacher from the onset, because I was not yet a graduate, by then I was just concluding my my senior six. But um, mm -hmm. one of the greatest challenge is when you're standing in front of the audience is there is audibility, you have a problem of, <laughs> of uh, talking when people are not hearing you or, the, or mm -hmm. there is also stereotyping in communication whereby as you stand in front of people, the, the first two, three days when you talk to them, they will now stereotype you. Whenever you stand up, people will say, mm -hmm. he's going to mention this and this and this. This is where mm -hmm. nicknaming comes in. <laughs> they nickname you. They will call you yeah. different names when you don't, you know. So you must avoid manalism when you're in front yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. Like uh, so many people, when they're, they're in front of people, they like to speak a sentence and then they go over, they go over boss, uh, they say, uh, they, uh, they get a given word <laughs> that people will always know that when he has paused, he's going to do this. So <laughs> those are some of the challenges. Yeah, but basically, if you want to make it, is prepare. Number two, listen to all the, to, all, to 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 other guys who communicated before you. Look at how others prepared before. Yeah. Don't think that you know everything. <laughs> Me, yeah. this is what I use. I always know that I don't know anything. I just prepare every yeah. day in Uganda, in Rwanda and Uganda. We usually say that. Uh, your best uh your best uh, someone is the one you are going to preach mm. so you should not always use experience saying that uh, these are people i'm used to them <laughs> no yeah. prepare 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 yes thank you Pastor. Yes. thank you thank you so much Lubega. i think that was spot on um you know i liked what you said Lubega. you know sometimes we as leaders and teachers we may take it for granted in the sense that hey i've i've thought this for five years, 10 years, and I know my audience, I know that they're going to listen, I know that they're not going to come up with questions, or I know that, you know, uh, their level of understanding is this, so uh, let me just go above their level of understanding and just, I know that no questions. Now, that's a, the heart is not right there, right? So we must prepare, even if we have done it, or you taught that same chapter a hundred times, you still prepare because God can, uh, preparation is always very, very important. And uh, uh, no, and I like what you said, the bigger, you know, uh, just because we are there teaching doesn't mean that we know everything, but, uh, you know, and, and I've always felt that also because as a teacher, I know that there are many of them uh, in our church who are way ahead uh, in terms of their understanding, like in the sense that they're all, you know, heads of IT companies, divisional heads, uh, way above uh, you know in terms of uh, you know uh, you know uh, management administration administrative tasks but what libega said was it is because of the grace of god that you are there standing in front of them it's not something that we must take pride in say hey but you say god you give me the opportunity to teach people your word and the other side of the and the congregation of the hearers may be way ahead in terms of their speaking, in terms of their eloquence, in terms of their English or the, the language proficiency, uh, in terms of their understanding capability. They may be way ahead, but it's the grace of God. God has chosen you to stand before them. So how much more we must take this as an honor and prepare well. The moment we don't prepare and we try to go do something, it, it uh, we're taking it for granted. 
Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Lupika. You know, good to hear from someone who's been a teacher since 20 years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else would like um, to share? Yeah, John, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I remember uh, when I started uh, teaching or preaching, hmm. uh, one of the feedbacks I got this is in 2009 at that time. Um, one of the feedbacks I got was my rate of speech was very high. <laughs> okay. okay. So, uh, um, so, and my body language was not very great. So, my pastor's uh, my pastor and my pastor's wife told about this, and I uh, look, so I started working on it. So, how did I do it? I stood in front of a mirror and started saying um, uh, and worked on the body language. How do I move my hands? How do my how do I lift my eyebrows? <laughs> All those things. So I started working, uh, looking at the mirror and uh, rate of speech. I started recording uh, in phones yeah. and uh, just go back, listen to it, and see how uh, how well I'm communicating. So uh, still improving, <laughs> still working. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm not saying I'm I've reached there, but still doing yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, John. Yeah, that's that's uh, again very important. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, you know, I did that when, uh, and I still do it at times. You know, uh, last week was uh, we were talking about faith and science, and it had a lot of uh, you know the sermon and Sunday here at uh, APC uh, faith and science. So, uh, so I remember just you know praying intently and then just just reading about all those people who are scientists and those who are who don't believe in God and those scientists who believe in God, their thoughts and videos kept listening to them on YouTube and then, uh, you know, added material to what was already there and began to preach it in front of the mirror. And uh, it was more of a teaching sermon. It was not a preaching sermon. Uh, so we, we thought, right? So I prepared the whole thing and I stood and I, I think about two or three times I, you know, tried to share the whole sermon. Uh, in front of the mirror and it's really helpful right uh, now sometimes we may feel okay i've got content that's more than enough right uh, yes that's priority but it's also uh, the way of communicating imagine i have like really good content but i don't communicate it the right way right uh, it, it, i lose the essence of this of the teaching right so content communicating it in the right way body language again important i can't go there and just say okay today we are going to be talking nobody's going to listen they'll say hey what happened you know pastor or teacher has become very tired and it's better we all go home so we don't want that feeling right so yeah thank you john for sharing that isaac says i have not yet started teaching but i will in i would like to engage myself in due course how can i go about it yeah so I'll just give you a couple of uh, instructions and we will also look at it next week, um, practical keys to doing ministry. One is Isaac, um, if you're talking about teaching the word of God, just, just get into the word, just keep reading, keep diving into things, go, uh, go the extra mile of learning the history, the background, right? Uh, what kind of audience, uh, just go deeper, right? Just keep reading. You have to be a good reader. If you're not a reader, then ask God to give you that interest to read. He will, he will definitely give it to you. Right. And I always say this, uh, to people, you know, uh, I was never a reader, but, uh, now I just love to read. Right. So God puts that, it's not about me, but God puts that into people. Um, uh, so, so ask God to give you that ability and that interest to read. So get into the word. Now with online, you can just go, or the commentaries I've mentioned here, go and you can, you know, research, study, uh, just spend more time in God's word. Two is, even as you're doing that, ask the Holy Spirit to, uh, you know, he's your guide, he's your teacher. So to bring the revelation, uh, when he does, it's, it's powerful, right? Uh, you know, sometimes sermons, teachings we may understand and we forget about it, but a revelation stays inside, right? Even to the end of life, it stays inside us, right? Uh, so do that and then eventually stay faithful uh, wherever you are uh, ask god for opportunities it may be small opportunities maybe in a small group or with a couple of friends uh, so do your best even in the in the little as the bible verse says be faithful and small and he'll give you bigger things so start small 
uh, look for opportunities, be willing, and then eventually God will, even as you're faithful and small, God will give you bigger opportunities. But remember that uh, when the bigger opportunities comes, the higher the responsibilities, right? Uh, so you need to uh, push your game up even more, right? So, so it's basically like this, right? We were initially we had only DTH course, then we came up with a BTH course. So the moment I knew, okay, I'm going to be th teaching third years, I knew that I have to spend more time, right? I have to spend more time in the world. And these, this is for third year, and there's this whole feeling. Now, imagine we start masters. Praise God. Hope we start. But if we start masters, I've got to get back into the word, and there's so much, right? Uh, so just continue learning, Isaac. I think start off small. It's okay. I remember initially we started off with about maybe nine, ten students, or less than that as well. So it's okay to start small. Uh, God will give you opportunities as well as you grow. I hope that helps. Isaac, thank you. Lubega says, prayer and fasting. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Most welcome, Isaac. Lubega says, prayer and fasting for your teaching ministry is also very important. Yes, yes, prayer and fasting. Yes. Okay, so it was a good class, good questions, and uh, we'll continue to do this uh, even as we continue our uh, sessions in the coming weeks as well. Be open to questions. Let's leave time for questions as well. Uh, yeah, Lupega's comment again says, stay humble always, be honest during your teaching session. If a question comes out of your knowledge or experience, tell them the truth, don't cook answers in front of the audience, yeah. Don't, uh, basically, Lupega is saying, if you don't know something, be okay to say, no, I don't know. Uh, and a very important aspect of a teacher is to be teachable, right? So you can always say, I don't know, I'll come back with you uh, with the answers. So, right, so it's wonderful. It's wonderful, praise God, that God has given all of us uh, this opportunity to teach this word of God, freely given. We all must use it uh, to build people's lives. Right, let's close in prayer. Maybe one of us can close. Uh, anybody can close. Let's start, can I pray? Please go ahead, Alicia. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to praise and thank you this moment. We appreciate the opportunity that you have granted us to gather here and learn in your word. Father, we pray Lord, committing ourselves into your hands once more. We ask for your grace in the name of Jesus, that we will be great teachers, not in word, but in deed, O oh God. As Jesus talks with his life, may what we teach be also matched with our lives in the name of Jesus. Help us to let our teaching ministry pattern that of Jesus Christ, that men will follow us just to hear your word of truth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elisha. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you next Thursday. God bless. Thank you, Pastor.